know, our, our last anchor leg of the uh, great 2012 NW Water Conference is about to begin. Very important, so all set, please have a seat. And now, actually, she's, uh, she's actually in the house, so if everyone will stop and give a big round of applause and thanks to Angela Crevy. Thank you. Yay! We appreciate it. We really do. We want more up here at 66 Maritimes throughout the harbor. That's what we want. Everybody, please have a seat, please. Please, please. Anyway, but yeah, we're just hearing here. Thought a lot about it. Or don't, see if I care. Honestly, we're just hearing here. Yeah, I'm turning up the heat. I know it's a little cold out there. We didn't get our boat here. was the design community, the 
the architectural engineering community, the client community, the, the folks who get the money to build new launches and then make these decisions about how they're designed. And we thought that there's a, a lack of awareness about the different types of users, the different types of boats, and that that needed to be brought out. So our audience was a little different than the audience for the design guidelines that DEP has been working on, which Alan will speak about in a minute. So you should have all received a little handout, and it just describes the, uh, the, the quick uh, description of the design guidelines. And, and I'll just read off the questions that we were hoping to ask. And th this isn't a panel. Um, instead, we have people in the audience who we know can talk about some of these issues, and it's pretty much an open mic. So I'm gonna, uh, I'll talk a little bit more than Alan, and then we'll just open it up. Anybody wants to come up and talk about any of the answers to these questions. But let me say who's in the audience. So we asked Jim Chambers, who is the, he's the president and founder of Osprey Maritime, to be here. His, Jim is right back there to talk about any of the issues related to ships. Uh, and Alan Cohen, who I just mentioned, the EP. Nate Grove, Parks Department, was just here. Nate there. Uh, Josh Blair is here as well in the back. You can also answer some questions. Nancy Ross, as I just mentioned, and Rob Buchanan, who probably just stepped out. Okay, so here are the questions we were hoping to. Ah, there he is. All right. <laughs> okay, so what we'd like to know in our working on this document is, are there examples of great launches in the harbor that are good models of public access design? What are the factors that led to the success? Are there examples of very poor launches in the harbor and um, that are models of what we should not do and why? What do you think should be the audience for these design guidelines? How do we best disseminate this document? <clears throat> How does user input play a role in the outcome of public access designs? And are any launch types missing from the list below? So this is a summary of what follows is a summary of some of the launch types that are described in the document. And by the way, if you want to see a copy of it, just let me know through my email. My email is on our staff page on our website. So if you, is there anything you wanted to say that you didn't get to today, please email me. So um, anyway, think about the end of your, your thoughts or answers to those questions. And I'm going to pass it over to Alan right now. And Alan, what's your title? Director of Climate and Water Quality at DEP. So I just wanted to talk for a second uh, about an interagency effort between city agencies really coming out of the comprehensive front plan uh, that came out from the Department of City Planning in 2011. Um, and there was a pledge in the waterfront plan to enhance public access and expand the already uh, expansive So um, the city is opening up, I believe, seven new city-funded public access launches for uh, community power voting um, this year and next year uh, for the mayor's term. And we wanted to make sure that along with that, that there was a conversation about best practices for maintaining uh, public health and safety um, at these locations. And we also want to acknowledge that there's already uh, Large, um, you know, network that has established uh, best practices um, for, you know, um, considering criteria, uh, certain criteria like the local uh, water quality conditions, harbor traffic. Um, there's security zones all along the harbor. How do we make sure that um, there aren't conflicts uh, between human bad vessels um, and some of the local? Um, and so um, we met as uh, an interagency team, um, and we've come together with what you know we think um, are the, the factors that uh, we might want to consider when we're um, opening these new uh, locations. Um, and the ones that we honed in on are water quality, management, harbor traffic and security zones, and site access and equity to access. Um, proximity to like, uh, public transportation. Um, so really what we want to do is we want to make sure that the type of information that uh, people can use to make informed decisions is available. Um, concerning water quality, that's both like the ambient conditions um, and the standards that are set by the state DEC, as well as um, CSM information. So we want to make sure that that's available and that people that are going to be able to use 
use that type of information or accessing it. Um, and then, uh, with, as far as management goes, we have a lot of great examples as far as boathouses, but there's also, um, those are active sites, there's a lot of passive sites where people can get onto the water. We want to make sure that that's, uh, that people that are accessing the water there are doing so in a safe manner. And as I mentioned, um, that they know the rules of the road as far as the uh, harbor traffic goes, that they know where the security uh, zones are, that we're avoiding potential uh, conflicts. Um, and so basically, uh, what we're planning to do is put out a best practices document for stakeholder feedback and really um, you know, present what uh, our perspective is. We've gotten some initial stakeholder feedback. We had a meeting last week. Um, some of the people that are here today were at that meeting, and we've incorporated some initial comments. But we want to keep this as an evolving um, document that we can continue to, um, you know, sort of test it out at, at new locations as we open them up, and then um, we can, you know, modify what we think are the best practices and really what would. Um, yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, really, what it would serve as, you know, at the, at the end of the day, is uh, a place for people to um, to you know see what we all in one place. What what resources are, resources are available? There's the New York City Water Trail Association. Um, there's uh, you know, Gray's website, the Safe Harbor. Um, and so there are, there's a lot of information, and then there's the, the city um, uh, information in there. The Parks Department has uh, the uh, kayak information on their website. DEP has water quality information on, on their website. So we just want to make sure that people are, uh, are aware of the resources that are available. Thanks, Alan. And I think I want to clarify also that public access design is just as important as Designed for uh, larger ships and boats, and which is uh, why one, one of the reasons why we asked Jim to be here. But we're interested in that as well. That's not going to be a focus of this document. But if anybody has comments about the best designs for piers and other landings, let's talk about it. it those two come together in MWA's Community Eco Dock pro Program. Uh, there was a session about that yesterday. Our docks are designed to accommodate both human power boats and larger vessels. And uh, we, we hope we've come up with a good, a good answer with that design. We'll find out the first one's going in Bay Ridge, 69th Street Pier. And I know John Doswell came up with a list of uh, guidelines, who's also here, uh, for, um, for pier design. And maybe this pier that slopes up is a good example of <laughs> maybe what not to do in all cases in terms of good pier design, especially when it comes to boat access. All right, so this is supposed to be a brainstorming session. Uh, Becky or, or, uh, or Jamie will be taking notes on the flip chart. Does anyone want to open that up with the answer to any one of the first seven questions? Yes, come on up so we can all hear you. Uh, we're in virtual downtown boathouse. Thirty thousand people in clients and water. Speak up. Speak up.
pilot to need water level access, not three feet above, two feet above water level. Um, but the dock is too small, it can accommodate two boats. So when you go in a group of four paddlers, there's two people waiting out there for the dock. And, and you get off the dock, and it's a wonderful gangway to a 10 foot access area, and the boat is 17 feet long. So, um, like I said, it's a mixed pair. Yes, and it goes into an active bike pair. Um, uh, pier 96, beautiful boathouse. The uh, access level is about three feet above water level, and it had to be augmented with floating docks at water level. So a lot of the sites, we augment them so that they actually work for kayaking community. And it's really a matter of communicating between the people that design the thing and the actual boating community, which that seems to be a problem.
So, yeah, so go ahead. What are the problems in the Hudson River Park docks with the two big and the two bridges? Yeah. Right, so it's essentially like trying to launch from a brick wall. It doesn't rise or fall or flex with the waves in any way whatsoever. So if you've got a high weight zone, like ahead of the Hudson River here, you're trying to you're basically launching up a brick wall. Uh, we the long we get about both docks, they're, they're still heavy, they lower the water and they flex and they rise and fall with the waves. They're a lot safer than you. Does anybody get that? Okay. One of the so one of the characteristics of our docks too is that it flows. Okay. So tell me about anybody has any opinions about how we best what the best audience is for the human powered voting design guidelines and then anything about disseminating this document and getting out to the right audiences. So engineering and design community and parks departments of the city agencies that fund this, that's what we're assuming. I don't hear any huge disagreements about that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, I just, I mean, I want, I, this is sort of a larger issue, but when you are designing a dock, there's sort of two different agendas going on. And on the user end, we want a dock or a beach that really works for you know, simplicity and, and safety. And so the beach is the simplest. But you know, really a floating dock can be, you know, there are lots of simple, cheap ways, homemade ones like downtown boat has made. Those can all be done. But I think on the other side, and this is really more about the new kind of parks that we have and less about city parks. There's a, there, first of all, there's a incredible design sort of sensibility. Everything has to look like it should win an award. So that automatically becomes very expensive and consultants get involved and expensive engineers get involved. And all of a sudden you got this huge expensive thing that's getting built. And also the park administration is not really, it's, it's, I mean, I don't know, they're, they're public, private kind of hybrid parks. I think they're less accountable to the public. And there's less room for input on, on the design side from groups that are actually going to be using it. And so, and, and I, I've lived this in Brooklyn Bridge Park, really, and we're living it right now. Um, so, so it's just built in that there's less room for what really needs to happen, which is input from the user groups to make these things. And so in the end, you get something that's really much more expensive, much more public money gets spent on it. It's, it's not as useful. The, 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 just to sort of take the park side of it, uh, uh, their their big concern is liability, and their engineers are saying we got to build something that's bomb-proof and is going to last, and, and also is going to you know uh, prevent the possibility of a lawsuit someday. So I understand that they feel that they're under some pressure to do the best, you know, use the premium materials and build you know the highest stakes thing. And one, one example is the height of a dock off the water. Everybody knows their kayak has got to be down there low, six inches or so. But the guys building the docks, the engineers are saying, no, we can't, we can't do that. The, the dock is going to be underwater in a big wave or something. And then if people are standing on the dock, they're going to get wet. They might even get washed off the dock. Well, that's just, that's part of the deal. That's how, you know, if you want a usable dock, you're occasionally a wake is going to come over it or over a corner of it. How do you, I mean, that's where we're at. You know, there's just, I, I don't know how we get beyond that. Well, one of the ways to get beyond that, I think, is that you have to build in the time for the user input into each project and allow for the process that I described before to take place. And I think that a lot of times the engineering, uh, the, the, the program or the work plan does not include enough time to, to take account of all those different design ideas and come up with the best solution because it is time, it's very time consuming. That adds to the price of the projects. So, all right. Any? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I just want to make another point about uh, the design flaw. Sometimes it seems like we're using standard components. Like all the gangways are the same. They're all too narrow for two kayaks or a canoe to pass each other, or even for two people to carry, um, say, a dinghy or a, a rowboat. And and then you have a bend where a 17-foot boat cannot, it doesn't bend, it has to be lifted over the railings of the gangway to make it around the corner. So I think oftentimes where money is saved is in places where there's sort of a standard gangway that works for people walking onto a ship or off a ship, but not for the actual use of these docks that we're working off. So 
So like, this goes for pretty much all the docks on the river. Okay. Good. Um, so in terms of the list of launches that are here, does anybody have anything to add? We hope this is essentially follows the outline of the document as well. Go ahead. One of the largest problems is that there's not enough consultation before the initial planning of where to put the place. The 96th Street Pier is located directly over, the boathouse is directly over a CSO, which is not a very good place to put a boat launch. Most of them are, have a CSO right next So basically, the, I, I can't imagine that there are going to be many more new boat places set up, but if there are, the geniuses who run the parks shouldn't make a decision where to put it before they talk to the people who are going to be using the thing. Because most of the people who are in administrative positions have not gotten their feet wet in boats. They've been on bigger boats. Right. Oh, so um, if, if Roland has his way, we'll be building these all over the place. So there are going to be lots of them built, I think, over the next several generations. <laughs> So, uh, in terms of where to place them, I, I think that there's not, I, I don't feel like there's a lot we can do about CSOs. And there's, there's a ton you can do about education and notification and the way that you structure a, a voting program so that it's, it's managed, so that you're not going out in the middle of the rainstorm and, and, and letting people know when there's CSO activity. Just like we heard. Right, just like we heard earlier. Go ahead, Grant. Um, I'll make another comment about placement in P96. It's placed wrong with respect to the sun, and this is no surprise. The sun sets in the west. We're trying to run a program, and we're looking directly into the sun. Right? The boathouse should not have been put in the northeast corner of the embayment. It just doesn't make any sense if you're trying to run a public program. And Grammy wrote, I know a great guide about how to build boathouses that <laughs> we would like to have as no, part of this no. document. No, no, I think it's really great. <laughs> Yeah, Maggie. There, um, the state of New Jersey has started to allow municipalities to have individual access plans. I've heard of Harbor Estuary Rock. Do you uh, remember the exact name of that? MPAP, Municipal something. Municipal plan. Access plan. But when this document is finished to like target the municipality level people doing that in New Jersey, it might be an eye opener for them. So to add them to audiences. Oh, it's a great idea. That's a really good idea. Okay. Any other, if, th before we wrap up, if anybody wants to talk about John or Jim, the same effort being done for the non human power voting community. <laughs> consideration now but swimmers somewhere down the road. Yeah. Okay. okay, so two more little infomercials for MWA before I wrap up. 
One is that we've been working with John Doswell and Will Ilkins, who's in the uh, right there. Will and Amy, who is Amy Peebeck, who's not here today, have been working on a database of all the vessels in, that use the harbor or call the harbor home. We hope to have a public interface for that in the next um, six months if we can find some pro bono uh, consulting services for Salesforce. <laughs> Oh, he did. Okay, great. Nelson's going to do it for us, which is great. So that'll be other. The next is our MWA task force meetings, which will be starting in the fall, and we'll have a couple centered specifically on community equidocs, the placement of new lo new locations for community equidocs, and any design issues and programming issues related to the docs. So we hope that you're on that mailing list. If you think you're not, please email me, and we would love to have you participate. All right, with that, I'm going to hand over to I just want to say uh, thanks, Courtney, and thanks all for that. It was a good discussion. And um, this is a bit of a marathon, this uh, two day uh, conference, but a, a really worthwhile and informative. Uh, we're going we're gonna to get all that, that guy right there is recording everything. Everything's going to be recorded. Uh, it'll be on our website, and um, we'll be distilling it. And a lot of good work is going to come out of this. Enjoy this. I hope we all get it, are able to get it out on the water or near the water the rest of the day. It's a beautiful day. I just wish you all uh, the best. And thank you very much for coming today. Bye-bye. Uh, all right. Put your kids up too right now. Yeah.